Hey guys, D's here, and today I'm just gonna like upload this video. I'm not like I'm probably not gonna be home, so it's probably gonna go up Saturday or tomorrow. Today is Thursday. Well, now it's Friday. It's two two eighteen in the morning. So I just want you guys to like look at this video, and I want you guys to leave a comment, and you know might as well subscribe if you're new. Uh, don't forget to like the video. But searching videos and going through the YouTube like I usually do at 2 30 in the and I found this one video this kid was bullied He told people that he was gonna kill himself. These people did nothing. So watch this video guys Like I just I just really wanted to if you guys ever see this ever see this happening to a kid You ever if somebody ever tells you they're gonna kill themselves You tell somebody if you guys ever see somebody getting bullied you step in don't be a bystander You guys step in and don't let somebody get bullied never treat somebody like this never tell anybody to kill yourself like, that's not, that's not something to joke about. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and peace out. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. It's really sad. I, I, I did, like, I was, like, almost tearing up, when, like, near the end. So, you guys have a great day. I'm out, guys. Peace. My name is Amy Briggs. I'm from Lafargeville, New York. Been married for 22 years. Um, we have two beautiful children. Michael is a great kid. He is, uh, he loves sports. He plays lacrosse. He's bright, um, top of his class. Daniel was an old soul. He had a soft side of him that was second to none for a kid his age. He wanted to help people. Our, our neighbor down the road had cancer and Daniel was by his side every day. Daniel went over and sat and talked to him and held his hand. And after he died, Daniel went over and helped his wife. It wasn't like he was doing it out of obligation either. He, he did it because he truly wanted to do it. That's who he was. Daniel had really been bullied most of his school career. When he hit high school, it, it exploded. He didn't fit in with a lot of the crowds. He wasn't into sports. He was into hunting and trapping, which not a lot of kids his age are into. So he had a hard time finding kids who had common interests with him. So that made him a target a lot of the time. It started out with words. He was called just horrible names. It progressed to having trash thrown at him. He was punched in the stomach. He was made to lick a bus window. He was jumped from behind walking to the buses. He was ridiculed for the music he listened to. Um, you name it. They looked for any little thing just to make his life miserable. When he was jumped walking to the bus, the, the boy told him the night before that he was going to do it. He said to him in a text, why? I know you don't like me. That's why I don't come near you. I don't have any interactions with you. I respect that. Why can't you respect me? What have I done to you? His response was, because you're a pussy and you need your ass kicked. It just, it, it makes no sense to me even today. One of the kids that Daniel had a lot of issues with had texted him. I saw the text myself. And it said, why don't you take one of your precious guns and do the world a favor, go kill yourself. He texted that same kid and he said, you won't have to worry about me anymore. I'm going to go home and kill myself. And, he sa and the kid came back with, put up or shut up. That day, he told people in lunch. He had told people in his classroom, told a number of people on the bus that he was going to kill himself. Those were his words, I'm going home and I'm gonna kill myself. And the bus driver said, I'll see you tomorrow, Dan. He told the bus driver, you won't see me tomorrow. The one person he knew that would do something was the last person he texted and the last person he called, his hunting friend, Matt. He knew Matt would try to call us and he said to Matt, please don't call my mom. My mom will take me to the hospital. He was trying to keep Daniel on the phone, get his sister's attention. He was writing her notes and having her call their father, who's a friend of my husband's. And we missed the call. We missed the call. We came out of Michael's basketball game and my husband Rob said, I missed a call from KL, I'll call him when I get home. Next thing happened, literally within a minute of saying that, 
So our other friend Wally calls. Now guys don't talk to each other all the time. And Rob runs to the van and he said, Daniel's talking suicide. I call my next door neighbor and I begged her, go over and check on him. And uh, she walked in the door and she yelled, Daniel. And she heard, she thought she heard him say something and she shouted out, we love you. And then she heard the shotgun blast. And I ran to his room and the sight that I saw was horrific. It was horrific and I remember hearing myself screaming but I couldn't feel it and running back outside and I could hear Michael screaming I want my brother back and every EMT every EMT that showed up I begged him please just find a pulse I'll take them any way that I can have them. <laughs> there was none. I've, I've played a million scenarios over in my head what I would do if I was there 30 minutes earlier. Knowing what I know now, I would just wrap him in my arms and just beg him and tell him how much he means to so many people. Because so many people have talked to us since he died. They've sent us letters. I, I receive letters from kids his age. I just wish he knew how much he meant to so many people. He did matter. He does matter. His book bag with his books still right on the bench where he left it that day. We will never recover from this. Never. When somebody tells you that they are going to kill themselves or they're going to do harm, do something. Tell somebody, give them their 15 minutes. Validate them. Because everybody needs to be validated. When you know there's somebody being bullied, don't be a bystander. You are just as guilty as the bullies when you stand by and do nothing. You need, you see it, you do something about it. You, you don't want to intervene, then you talk to an adult and you talk to an adult until somebody does something.